everyone. Hopefully you can see us live. We are coming to you with our little Romeo from Florida in nice warm Florida. Um, Way to rub it in. <laughs> um, we are here and we are talking about something that's so important and the topic is all about going and propelling change and really moving at a fast rate because this is a common thread that comes up with our students. They want to know, how can I move faster and how can I really change when they want that change and they feel like they're not getting anywhere. And a lot of people like will hit that plateau and they get frustrated and that's actually a huge place to be. Like the most amazing place is to be frustrated because you're actually feeling if if you're not frustrated and you're thinking oh i'm hitting a plateau with my mediumship or my psychic development or mindset development and you don't really care then you can't really make change you don't really push yourself to make change right yeah true you just keep doing the same thing and most of you probably 99 percent of you that listen to this podcast 99 percent of our students that we get you study the books you do the personal development you meditate you, uh, most of you take care of your health, your physical exercise. Um, you're doing a lot of things. You'll watch the motivational videos online. You'll wa listen to these podcasts. You'll do a lot of things that move the needle, right? It moves the needle yeah. up, moves the needle up, moves the needle up. And you do that year after year and you see a lot of changes happening, just like I did. I, you know, studying the books, watching um, the Law of Attraction videos and all of these different things that really help you make change and move forward. And then you hit a point to where, like Lindsay is saying, you start to plateau, you start to realize like, wait, I'm not moving as fast as I want to. I feel like when I was visualizing this time, five years ago, I thought I'd be way farther ahead, right? Does that feel like you? I know that feels like me at times. And then you have an experience. You go to a workshop, you do a mastermind, you do some kind of experience, whether it's a four day, a two day, um, we do 90 day masterminds with our clients. So maybe you joined a 90 day mastermind at some point and you started to realize like, wait, I'm growing at such a much faster rate and my clarity is off the charts. Has that ever happened to you? Like when you were in a workshop or um, you were taking a class or you were just with a, a group of like-minded people and you realize like I'm growing at a faster rate right now like I'm, my clarity is through the roof and why is this happening right and this is the same pattern what I described that we hear often from ourselves Lindsay went through it I went through it from people like you people that are growing people like us like we're in the personal development we're growing and then you start to realize different patterns. Like when I do this, I grow at a much faster rate. When I do this, I grow, but it's like a snail growing. So we only have so much time here on earth. And that's why Lindsay and I, we put these total immersion experiences in our business to provide the opportunity for our clients. Yeah. We got our retreat coming up. Yeah. I was going to say, let's talk April. about the full immersion too, the yeah. process of it. Yeah. It goes with the retreat, right? Yeah, and it's it's the reason why we do that, right? Because we've seen different vehicles make changes faster than other vehicles. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking of Camp Circle of Love, too, where we volunteer there. It's a camp, grief camp for kids. And, when, and it's funny because it's been lining up around the retreat, so we haven't got to go the past few years. Um, but we did it for, I don't know how many. I think I started in 2007. When you moved here, I did it like started. six years in a row. Yeah, it is the most powerful experience. And the one thing that I want to mention, kind of steering away from the retreat and coming back to it, is during that full immersion where you're fully embodied in the space of grief, these children, we watched them from day one till the last day and how they changed. And one of my third grade students actually lost his father. And he lost his dad years before he came to me, maybe one or two years before he came to third grade. So I saw him one way. He was a very like sunshiny kid. Like he was always joking around and he was, he was funny, but he did have moments where there were things that would pop up and I could see his behavior, you know, change and see him thinking. 
Well, he attended the grief camp, and that grief camp is amazing if you're in the Tampa Bay area or any area, look to see if there's a grief camp for children. Um, so they would come, they would have fun. We would do songs connected to loss and grief, but they were, they were good songs. They had a drum circle, um, fun games, you know, outside like camp games. What else do we do? Puppet shows related to grief. We well, connected deeply the whole weekend. Every, every, even when there was, it was a fun activity, right? It, the activity found a way to help us connect deeply with the other with the participants that were at the camp yeah and when he left camp and i saw him change during camp but i didn't realize the drastic change until he came to class on that monday and how different his behavior was because he was seen understood and he went through the emotional steps that we had in place at this camp and it reminds me so much of all the fully immersion things that we've attended ourselves and learned from, and then the the fully immersion process that we create for our students like the retreat. And I would say the retreat is the next level of the next level. Like people will come to us and they'll say, okay, I wanna join the mastermind, whether it's the business mastermind or the mediumship mastermind, unlock your, um, well, it is a mastermind, unlock your inner medium, the mentorship. And they'll say, well, what do I do next? And we always say two things. One is the retreat where it's full immersion, where we're, stay we're all staying in the same house, except Tony, he's not staying in the house, um, but he's teaching and he's there. From, no boys allowed. No boys allowed, <laughs> staying in the house. So from morning till night, like before we go to bed and when we wake up. Um, and then, and then the other thing is, is we say mediumship mastery circle. And that's another piece where you know, we're practicing each month and there's audio breakthroughs where you can listen to things to pep you up when you're having tough times. But when we do this in-person piece of the retreat, we notice how much change takes place within the souls of everyone, including us. We get healing by being at this retreat. Yeah, in four short days. It, yeah, short days, but they feel like, what? That felt like 10 years packed in to these weekends um, or weeks of all this information that's coming together. And people will say to us, well, do I have to be at a certain level? And you know, what do I have to do to prepare? Just show up. Like the main thing is, is to know that if you're a student of ours, then we know you. We're accepting people that we do know because we're staying in a house. We wanna make sure we know the people that um, are coming and we know that they're the right fit. And also, you know, our teaching styles that's the biggest thing too yeah definitely so it's it's really you have several choices on growth you have yeah. you you could learn many different ways you can grow many different ways some of the ways I describe with through books through YouTube videos through courses I bought a course like three years ago from one of my mentors and I started I was immersed in it you know I still look at the videos till this day on a weekly basis and I was growing a lot back then. When I first got the, the course, I was studying it, and I was, I was, every single day, I was watching the videos, applying the information, watching the videos, applying the information, and I grew a lot. And then, then maybe like two years later after doing that, I joined one of his programs, which was like a six-day total immersion program to where I'm with all other coaches, um, totally immersed really with all of the course information, we were just applying it. We were in this vehicle for applying all of this information, just how the retreat is. That's what the retreat is. It's a vehicle that we use for four days to apply all of this information. And you must be a student in one of our other programs. And we come in this vehicle, just like I went in my mentor's vehicle for six days and I was totally immersed. And I was blown away by the end of the six days because I had studied the course for two years at that point and I grew so much and then I realized at the end of those six days and really about a month or two after those six days ended I was like whoa this growth that I created in these six short days was probably ten times the growth that I created in the previous two years and what was different about it so I started reflecting on it I started thinking because I was a basketball player and I was thinking like how when I grew exponentially as a basketball player, when did I grow? And I started to remember times when 
I was practicing on my own and I was shooting free throws, I was doing layups and I grew a little bit. But when I grew the most was when I was at basketball camps, when I was on a basketball team, when I was totally immersed in the season with coaches around me, with players, with like-minded people, with that energy. And I would feed off that energy when I was playing basketball. I would feed off that energy on the court. When I was on the court by myself, I only had my own energy to feed off. When I was on the court with other players, with coaches, I was feeding off all of that energy. And the same thing happens in our retreats, right? We have coaches for you there. We have a chef there. Um, in our 90-day mastermind, in our programs, right? We have coaches. We have resources. There's other like-minded students there, right? At the retreat, it's all psychic mediums, right? At our other programs, it's mostly all psychic mediums. So you have all of this energy around. You have all of these coaches compounding into the mastermind effect. And back then when I was playing basketball at, at such a young age, I didn't know anything about the mastermind effect, which is when you got two or more people coming together with the same vision, the same clarity, you start to tap into God or this spirit or this other source of energy that pours into both of you. And that's why when you're in a classroom, that's why when you're in a workshop or maybe even on this podcast live, or maybe you're watching it after recording. Yeah, say after hello recording, when you're here because we can't see who's here. You start to have this clarity. You start to have new thoughts come into your mind. You start to have this new vision, this new perception of your world. And it happens real quick when you team up with a group of like-minded people the with the same mission. It happens fast, right? You can do it slow or you can be like, all right, I'm just going to go all in. And we're going to create this right now. Like, we're going to move the energy right now. Like, how many of you are frustrated oh. from having that plateau? From feeling that, think about that energy of what a plateau feels like, right? It's like a stagnant energy. And think about how frustrated you can be from feel that stag feeling that stagnation, right? And how desperate do you get to want to move that energy, to want to create that momentum, and think about in your life right now, think about when inside of your mediumship skills, maybe inside of your business, inside of other areas of your life, when do you move the needle the most? So comment below because we can see some. Hi, Tony. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Tony. And, and Mary's Shannon. here. We're and so Mary. excited that you're here. Definitely. Shannon says animals need that so much too to be heard. And it's truly amazing how much of a difference even one session makes in their ability to heal emotionally, turn from grief. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we actually see Romeo, um, now that you bring that up, Shannon, Romeo will go, he has a friend in the neighbor neighborhood named Lioness, and his energy will completely change when he goes to see Lioness. And I was just actually out the other day, and there was a group of five dogs running around, and... Oh my gosh, it was like the best energy with all of them running around and being together and having that playfulness. And then it also brings the owners um, together too. So this is a huge thing. And I think that the biggest thing that comes up with our students is they're saying, well, I'm in this mentorship or I'm in, you know, the retreat. And then all of a sudden when they leave, they're like, what do I do? For us, the importance of setting up things every year and even repeating things that are working because you're a different person at that time in your life is important too, to sign up. You, you probably don't even know how many times we've taken the same exact program, like Tony, you just said, that you've gone through your e-course. Same with me. Like when I go through, sign up for an online course, I don't take it just once. I want to go back to pieces. Tony's a little bit better where he, I think you do it more consistently than me. You're redoing over and over again. And that's how the knowledge is going to be. Go from knowledge to wisdom when you actually can act out on the knowledge that you learn because you're applying it because you know it so well. Um, the other thing with full immersion is it's time crunched together. So if you are not, it's your environment, it's the people, it's the energy that's set up, it's how it's set up. And I think that's really important because you can be in a situation where you're in a class and you're moving at a slow rate because it doesn't feel safe to be seen, to be heard, to ask questions. So you have to really think about that. Who are the people, places, and things that I'm surrounding myself with? And is it the right fit for me? 
because one of the things that we recognized over the years is your family can't help you. You know, like your family could be there for you definitely without a doubt. But when you are learning a skill, it's important to surround yourself with people that have either one already obtained that skill or two, they've, they're an expert in the field. They have fully immersed themselves with people that are going through it. They've learned, they put in the hours over 10,000 hours. You don't want to be listening to people on the sidelines that haven't done it. So it's important, you know, people can be there for you, like as a psychic medium and healer, they can be there for you, but they can't be your peer and say, I get it, because they've never given a reading. They don't understand it. And I think that's the important piece to this. Like when you said that you signed up for the, the coaching and you were it live and having that live piece to it, it's because you were surrounded with people that are doing it. They're in the energy. They have the same problems. They have the celebrations. And you can actually see, oh, that's pushing me beyond where I need to be right now. Because you can spot something in someone and say, oh, I would love to get to that point. Or, oh, I'm listening to their issues that they've come into contact with. That's something that I witnessed. Or maybe you hear someone speak and you're like, I haven't experienced that yet. But a year later something comes up and you're like, I remember I was sitting in that class or I was sitting in that workshop or retreat. And I remember when someone shared it and I know how they solved the problem. So I don't have to go the long way. I can go the short way and make it happen fast. Yeah, exactly. And you're surrounded by people that are actually taking action. That's, That's a huge part of it too, was what Lindsay was saying. Like yeah. people in the field taking action, right? You want to do retreats, they're people's running retreats. You want to do mediumship readings, be around people that are doing mediumship readings, right? They're in action because when you get around people that are in action, there's an energy that hits you, that puts you into action, which comes to our next point. Like the fastest way to grow too is to put yourself out there. Yeah. To put yourself out there, be in action, right? So many of us can get in stagnation because we're trying to create the perfect plan or we're trying to create the perfect email, the perfect way to show up rather than just go out there and take imperfect action. Yes. Because as you know, like when you're learning how to ride a bike or you're learning to swim or anything like that, you can't just study about it. You can't just like plan about it and prep. Like, like you have to jump into it. So that's another part of the value is like when you're going to the retreat, the retreat that we run every year, you're surrounded by all people that are taking action. These are people that have went through some of our programs, at least one of them, and they're in action, right? They're in process. And they're not making excuses. Not they're, making excuses. They're actually taking time to, to invest the time and energy and money into what they want to do. And this doesn't mean it has to be all of our programs. It could be other programs too. Are you making excuses for yourself and staying with a story that's not serving you anymore? That's a big thing. I think that's a common theme is, when you want to make change, it's really easy to give more energy and passion to the problems that come up with psychic mediumship development. Like, well, it took me a long time before, or, you know, I have a family, or I have, um, I have, a, I have a dog. I, I have a dog. It I, rained I, outside. It, I have a bunch of things going on. I have another job. It's like, yeah, but if you want to set yourself apart and push beyond your glass ceiling, you have to take uncomfortable action even when there are excuses that you can find to give to not live out your dream and not help people. So really the question that we always ask our business masterminders are, how bad do you actually want it? How sick are you of yourself giving yourself excuses that's gonna keep you small because you have 90 days to make a change? 90 days where you're supported, 90 days where you can actually have a living organism of people that are surrounding you and supporting you to propel you forward. And I think that's a big thing that we've noticed over the years is we've worked with so many different psychic mediums and healers and mainly they all have the same things going on. I, I've seen it within myself, like we've worked with the people. And then also I think about the people that I've worked with, like giving psychic readings. I've given psychic readings to billionaires. I've given psychic readings to athletes. I've given psych psychic readings to psychic mediums and healers or, you know, investors, anyone. And they all have similar things coming up in their energy field. 
And I think the big thing is, is sometimes we need the power of belief to propel us forward. And sometimes it's going to be the coach. Sometimes it's going to be the leader or the teacher that has more belief in you than you do for yourself to start you off. And then it gets you propelled forward. So that's the important key piece here. A lot of people will come to us and say, wait a second, I've been doing readings for 20 years and I've had, I really haven't had a lot of business or I haven't had a lot of results, but now I'm sitting in the mastermind and all of a sudden I'm getting a pouring of energy coming to me where there's opportunity. I'm getting interviewed on podcast episodes. I'm getting more clients. I feel like things are just finally coming together, but I didn't really do much at the beginning. Like, why is this changing? It's because when you're in a mastermind, like we said at the beginning, Tony mentioned, two or more people with the same vision, there creates a clarity. There creates more alignment. And you start taking small steps and huge action, and you stay laser focused and you get huge results. But in order to have lasting change and propel yourself forward, you really do need full immersion. That means not dabbling here or there. It's like, no, I'm dedicating the time, energy, and space to my craft to make things happen because I want it that bad. I'm not going to give myself an excuse. I'm not going to put it off till next year. I, I'm, I'm going to keep on moving and I'm going to make it happen. And I think that's the big thing. Yeah, it is. And the values there, right? You, you get around a group of people doing it. The values there, like with Lindsay said, with the coaches, with the energy, with sometimes another student that's part of the class will say something like it'll maybe be a student that you look up to that's been doing readings for 20 years. And maybe before you took the class and you were with this student, you were thinking, oh, everything's perfect for her. She never feels like how I feel. And then she says something. Right, this person says something that you look up to that says, I feel like I'm not enough. Like almost on a weekly basis, there's like one day a week where I'm like, I go to do a reading and I just don't feel like I'm enough. And sometimes it's because of a, a reading I did last week and I'm thinking it wasn't good enough and I'm overthinking it. And you hear somebody that you look up to say those same words that you feel on a weekly basis. And then all of a sudden you realize, wait, I'm not alone. Like other people feel this way too. So this is just part of the process and you get out of your own way. Right. And, and you'll hear space. all of these different angles that will get you out of your head because you know, and I know that that's the biggest thing stopping you from your goal, from your vision. It's you getting in your own way. It's not because you're not talented enough. You don't have enough skill or you don't know how to do what you need to do, right? Anything you need to learn, go to YouTube. YouTube will teach you for free, right? You could go there, you could learn anything, you could apply it over and over, but why don't we do this? Why don't many of us uh, do these things? It's because we're getting in our own way. And when you get around people that are doing it, you start to see these little patterns and clues of how they're getting out of their own way. One of them is realizing that we're all very similar. We all go through these fears. We all feel like we're not enough at times. We all feel scared when we're posted on social media at times. Like, what are they going to think? What are they going to think? We all have these little mini fears inside of us. I heard a tennis player, um, Novak Djokovic, he's one of the top tennis players in the world. An interviewer asked him and said, hey, you don't seem like you're ever scared out there. You seem like you're just like on point all the time. And Novak Djokovic laughed and he said, look, I'm a human too. I have all of these same feelings that you have. And whenever I feel this on the court, whenever I get in my own head and I get in my own way and I think fearful thoughts, he's like, what I do is I take a deep breath, I recenter myself and then I go back at it. So we all feel like this. No matter what platform we put people on, no matter how much of a leader you think somebody is or how perfect you think they are, we're all humans. And that's some of the value that you get when you go around like-minded people. That's only like 1% of the value. There's so many things that we could keep naming and there's so many things that we can't put words on that you remember when you go around a group of like-minded people, you think back to your past of doing that, you've always grown the most. You've that's always true. moved forward the fastest. Yeah. And it's one of those things that 
when you are surrounding yourself with the right people, you start to notice, okay, I have a little bit more faith in myself because sometimes you can get around people and you start to realize, wow, I actually know a little bit more than I thought that I did just because you're having these conversations. That's true too, yes. And I feel like that's a big thing. And and having that it's faith... It's like if she could do it, I definitely can do it kind of thing, right? Well, or if he yeah, can do it, I no, can. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. No, no, sometimes like that. But I, but I also mean like, you know, when we're having this conversation, like if you say like five years ago or 10 years ago or whatever amount of time, like I think about even like grief when I'm actually able to speak about it. Like in 2007, I wouldn't be able to speak about it. So you think, oh, me actually communicating makes me realize that, yeah, I have moved along further than I can. True. But the thing is, is what happens is sometimes you think that you know more than you do. Because you're talking about it, but you're not actually carrying it out. Maybe there was one point in your life where you carried it out in a different area. Like a lot of students that we work with, they might say, well, I used to have this business and I did well. That's great. That was a stepping stone. But where are you at right now and what you want for your dream? You know, like how many excuses are you making for yourself right now? How many stories are you sticking with? that you're giving so much energy and power to that's actually taking away from your vision. Because I, I saw Joe Olstein um, talk about this and I, I've explained it to our mediumship uh, membership or mastermind and it was the power of your bucket, like what's leaking out in different places. And he talked about how he thought that we all have something inside us every day. We have like an allotted amount of energy that we give, right? So there's times where we can waste our time and energy with like negative thoughts or dealing with, you know, people that aren't supporting us or dealing with like negative Nancy's and like old stories and old patterns. Like we can spend a lot of time there. That's using our important energy that we could be pouring out into people that either need it more, that's actually receiving it, pouring it out to focusing in on ourselves so we can get recharged to give back to people or doing it in a way that's really intentional. And I think this is a big thing that when you are intentional with your thoughts, your language and your actions, you're going to notice your whole entire life is transformed. A lot of the times when we work with people, we uncover conflicting beliefs like I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to do well for my family. But the other negative belief that the conflicting that goes with it, the conflicting belief is, well, I don't want to be selfish and I don't want to focus on, you know, making money or doing well because I, I don't want it to come off as bragging or whatever it is. So it's like there's two different beliefs. Like you want to be able to go and spend time with family. You want to be able to vacation. You want to be able to enjoy time with your clients and give to them and be able to, like for us to host the retreat, there has to be some sort of belief that gets you there or else what happens is, is you get all this information that comes to you and it just is like sand. It falls through your fingers and you're like, what? I just had all of this and now it's gone. That comes back to the belief that's very strong ingrained in your mind from your childhood that either one, you're not worthy or two, uh, I don't know if I feel good actually having this. Like, does this even feel right to me? This is a very common theme for all humans. And the way to get past this is one, to surround yourself with the right people that have the belief that yes, you can have it all and still do good. And two, it's retraining your brain to think, okay, why am I thinking like this? Like, why is it not okay to have everything that I want so I can give to people? And yeah, yourself, yourself reflecting, right? And it's it, all about that. It's like, I mean, it's owning like what is really happening. So yeah. we always call it, we call it with our clients, uh, head knowledge Marky. versus wisdom. So head knowledge is, it's what we teach in school, right? We, Lindsay and I were both teachers. We would teach our students head knowledge and then they'd have to pass a test. And if they pass it, right, you're a smart student. You get A's. You're a, yeah. you're a B student. You're a C student. And we're testing head knowledge, right? And it's what you can mem It's You memorize it. You've learned it on videos from other people. But the difference is now you have wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom, and this is part of the self-reflection, self-awareness. Like what's really going on in your world? Wisdom is what you're actually applying. 
over and over and over on a consistent basis. So if you look like look back in the past year and think about write down all the head knowledge you have about money, about relationships, business, everything that you know, write it on a, on the left side of your piece of paper. On the right side, write down what you're actually applying. And when you do this process, it's painful because you start to realize the distinction between your head knowledge and what you're actually applying and how big of a gap there is there. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we try to like run to more information, a new book, a new podcast episode like you're listening to now, all different things like that. When in reality, keep doing that. You want to keep studying, but you also want to look and feel like, figure out like, what am I actually applying in my life? What do I actually know? Right? Because the wisdom is what you actually know. When you have wisdom, when you learn something from a book, from a video, from a mentor, and then you apply it in your life over and over consistently and you continuously do that and you get results, now it's engraved in your body. Now you have a different perspective. Now you can feel it. Now when you share it with somebody, they feel it. They'll actually believe it. They'll believe it. You can help lead, lead them forward. But if you don't make that distinction and you just go the rest of your life and thinking that you know this, you know that, like some, like some of you are listening to this podcast episode and you're thinking, wait, I know that because I've heard that before. Question yourself. From here on out, question yourself. When you go to say, oh, I know that, for the rest of your life, think, do I really know that? Am I applying that? Am I living it? Am I living that? That's when you know it and just bridge the gap. So everything that you want to really know that's in your head knowledge, take it and apply it over and over and over. Not just one week, not two weeks, like consistently over years. And then you have wisdom and then you really know it. And then a lot of these old stories like Lindsay was talking about, these conflicting beliefs start to go away because yeah. you're not in your head anymore. You're in your wisdom and you're being real with what's actually happening in your world. And you know, Joe Dispenza talks about by the age of 35 years old, um, we are primed and prepped with our beliefs and the majority of those are connected to everyone else's beliefs. So we have to actually reflect like, wait, where did this belief come from? Because past a certain age, you're not having your own beliefs. You're actually having other people's combined beliefs. So it was really eye opening for me because I'm like, oh, that's where I have that belief. And I don't have the book shown up there. I need to find it. Um, but you can hear your life by Louise Hay. The companion book is really good. So I, I see that Marky, read... Marky, what's up, Marky? Marky. You put most of the time, people that we overlook can teach us the most. Exactly. That is Every, so all true. of us are teaching each other for sure. Everybody so on this true. planet. And I know we were talking the other day about homeless people, and I definitely, without a doubt, feel that we can learn so much. And even from these little animals. Yes. <laughs> like Romeo teaches us a lot um, just by example, by what he does and the unconditional love um, that he gives. Without or, saying one word. Yeah. The energy that you can feel. And I believe that. I believe that children could teach us. I believe that us, like me driving down the, the road honking at people because <laughs> they're cutting me off. That could teach me something too. And it might be a lesson about patience for me. Like I don't want to learn it that way, but that's exactly how it's happening. So, you know, when the Bostonian comes out in me, um, I definitely learn lessons. And usually it's not right in the moment, but it might be like a minute later or maybe 10 minutes later or whatever it is. So I totally agree with that. And let's go back. Um, Tony. Tony says, the retreat and the business masterminds are some of the best things I have given myself, not to mention the relationships I've built with the people I met. A true blessing. Tony, and we love having you as part of our community. And I always share the story because I feel it's like it's... always a blast a, working with Tony. I love working with Tony. We love you, Tony. Um, because one, <laughs> one of the stories that come up with Tony is Tony started with just getting... A mediumship reading we went to a small town in Illinois and I met up with her in person me and Tony and actually Romeo met her um, it was then, like eight years ago or, or nine, yeah I don't or, even know how many years it was like it's a chunk been. of time ago and then a couple of years after however many years later Tony started to take um, our classes and then we met again um, at the retreat and 
and now she's in mediumship mastery circle. She's been in it for years too. So it's so beautiful how it's all connected. And now she gives readings in her own business. Exactly. Now she's doing audience readings. Audience like readings. Private readings. And um, she's in Illinois. So definitely follow Tony too. And Shannon, we love having you a part of our community. And Shannon yes, do, said Shannon. Um, a hard lesson that I had to learn many decades ago is that it really does take a village. We need each other to propel us forward sometimes. Yes, we do. Totally. This is such a big part of it. So I want you to really think about like with this, if you missed this episode from the beginning, definitely watch the beginning pieces because I feel like this is really important. Um, and share with us any insights you got just from listening to this. But one thing that I would suggest is think about like, who are the people, places, and things that I'm surrounding myself with that are actually supporting my dreams? And a lot of people don't even know what their dream is because they don't take the time to think for themselves. They're thinking about what everyone else is saying. So what are your dreams, first of all? Like if you had to have like three words come up right now, are there three dreams that you have? And how are you taking action steps to get there? Like what are the steps that you're actually taking to get there? So it's important to propel yourself forward, be in full immersion. That means like get into a class, get into some sort of program that's going to propel you forward. Go in person, go online, whatever it is. Go to our retreat. If that's for you, we have a few spots <laughs> yes. left. Yes. And of course the retreat without a doubt. Um, we would love to have you April 22nd to the 25th. Um, and then side note, I actually have a business class coming up. So I know a lot of you on this are already signed up for that. It's going to be four, four Wednesdays um, that we're going to meet for like an hour. So it's going to be awesome to have you guys there. So think about things that you can join that connect to your vision and don't stop. Like really treat it like it's a job, but in a fun way. Like what are you going to do to make it happen, to stay consistent and like just make it happen and give yourself 90 days. Do something in 90 days. Pick something that you're going to do. Set up a time and day of the week or um, just get online right now and start searching like what aligns with my dreams so that you can actually make changes because next year at this time you're going to be kicking yourself if you didn't do anything different. Yeah, and so think about and think about like what are one to three needle movers, we'll call them. These are action steps that move the needle the most. Whether So say your goals for your health. Right. If you go into the gym and you do squats, you're doing full body workouts. Those those type of workouts move the needle the most for your health. With your business, what is that for you? Right. One of our business needle movers is creating podcasts. We're teachers. We love creating. So think about like what are those one to three action steps with whatever area you're trying to grow in your life that move the needle the most and keep it simple and hammer on those one to three action steps over and over and create some momentum for yourself and then you'll start to have more clarity come in your life over the weeks, over the months, over the years. And report back to us, keep us updated how it's going too. If you wanna say what you're gonna do, you can share it in the comments so you hold yourself accountable because it's right here. We love you all. Love you guys, talk to you soon, bye.